Buenas sera, and welcome to Critics and Cars Getting Home. Uh, we are on our way home from watching a new film by Ridley Scott. It is called uh, The House of Gucci, and in the film, everybody speaks like this. Uh, Except for Adam Driver, to be fair. Oh, Adam Driver. Sometimes he speaks a bit like this. Uh, Jeremy Irons, actually, if anybody. First two scenes, he, he speaks a little bit like this, and then they realize what everybody else do. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Al Pacino shows up and says, oh, we acting today. That's and, right. Uh, and then Jared Leto. Oh, my. So, welcome, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> We it's been a long time between drinks, and we're going to need some after that film. We decided it was definitely worth getting the old camera phone out again because The House of Gucci, which I think was one of my most anticipated films of this year, yes. is uh, not good. <laughs> How you say, not good. <laughs> Um, yeah, got the stuff. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they have Spanish actors and American actors playing Italian people, so I can use French, right? You can you can do anything you like. <laughs> Apparently, Apparently, if you're Ridley Scott and you're 85 and you've made 84, 84, yeah. going on 85, and you've made films such as Gladiator. Um, I suddenly did he make the counselor? Blade Runner, <laughs> Alien. He did make the counselor. I'm sorry to um, only think of the films speak, that were terrible. Speaking of films where he takes people who are not remotely that ethnicity and casts them as that. Hello, Selma Hayek is a right. Italian a psychic. So House of Gucci, as you probably know, is based on the real life murder of uh, Maurizio Gucci, played by Adam Driver. Yeah. Uh, that's not a spoiler because it's set up right at the very beginning of the film. The whole point of it is that the film then traces the trajectory of his love affair, uh, which does start as a beautiful marriage to Potri Patrizia Reggiani, who's played by the actually amazing Lady Gaga. I yeah. thought she was terrific. And I thought Driver was great. And, he, um, yeah, Driver I, is great because he's playing a character who's quite internalized and very smiley and very gentle. And the, the energy between the two of them um, is a really strong foundation for a really solid drama. And then you have these other actors just turning out. I mean, if Jared Leto was in bloody Super Mario Brothers as Luigi, the director of said, Jared, that's a bit too much, uh, you Turn know? Down, so where was the director of... Yeah. I gotta tell you, people, we're not ones for talking through the movies, obviously, because that would yeah. be terrible. But at one point, we were chuckling to ourselves about Jared Leto's. Uh, Far from the only ones in the audience chuckling. That's actually. right. Yeah. His uh, his impersonation uh, of Paolo Gucci and Doug leaned over and said, "Is there is there an Academy Award for most acting?" <laughs> and I just couldn't stop laughing for the rest of the film. So, ah, uh, so you know, I feel that there. Look, there's so much more wrong than the performances, There's so much though. more wrong. And, and so one thing I would say about the performances is, I don't know if you've been to Italy, but in my experience, the Italians actually speak quite quickly. But everybody here, they speak so slowly that every scene take a longer time. Especially when they give Jared Dito the chance to stand in a doorway for 10 seconds. Exactly. And then say a word. And, and there's... T terrible amount of pausing, not for dramatic effect at all. And quite honestly, I mean, I'm not the editor in the car, people, let's be honest. But honestly, I knew throughout that film bits that I would have edited differently. And quite often, there were completely superfluous lines of dialogue. For example, this is not a spoiler, uh, when the killers are, um, are tracking um, Adam Driver's character, uh, and we have to sit in the car for a moment with them while they look at the photograph and they spot him and then there's a shot of them saying that's him stop wasting my time Ridley this film is two hours 38 minutes as it is yeah yeah and the thing is look I mean we know he can make a good film because we literally just saw the, the last, last duel, duel. Uh, when we, so we went on a big spree of things that we had forgotten that we had done this for and so we rushed and saw the French Dispatch and the last duel and Dune and the power the minute that of the we dog were out of and lockdown. all of these sorts we went to of five things. films in five days yeah right? oh America we were in lockdown for like five months and so sure. movie theaters have only been open since like December 3rd so what we're saying is this is not a case of Ridley used to be good he turned 84 and he lost his touch last duel is a good film I thought we both really thought so film. right but this just aches of like 
I mean, there's four cameras in most scenes that we saw in the credits, and it's very much like, where do we put four cameras so we can do the shot once, scene once, the editor can chop it together, and we can get to lunch in time. Um, and maybe it was just like because of shooting under COVID that there are a lot of restrictions. But there's not a single iconic shot in the film. No. And it's a fashion film with big stars and beautiful outfits and gorgeous locations and, at and least all of these two things. Amazing, as you say, big stars, amazing performances from those stars. Al Pacino yeah. is definitely not one of them. No. Forget about it. <laughs> oh, um, and Jeremy Irons is not one of them and we've already talked about dear old Jared Leto. So really yes. it is Gaga's film and you know if she does get um, if she does win certainly the Golden Globe, if she wins an Oscar for it, I won't begrudge her that at all. I think what's extraordinary, right, is everybody in the film is overacting because they are larger than life characters. But the interesting thing to me, and this is maybe a little bit of my former drama teacher interest as well in performance, is Gaga doesn't ever seem to me like she's actually overacting. She feels like the embodiment of a real Italian woman who is who is wronged in love uh, and yeah. therefore, you know, gets into a, a, te a terrible criminal predicament. She miraculously doesn't seem to be overacting. And she's yeah. playing against people like Jared Leto, although there's a hilarious scene where Jared Leto rolls out of a car and has a big kind of like diatribe in the street. And there's a wonderful cutaway to, <laughs> to Gaga and Driver, who are in character, obviously. And Gaga literally goes, <sighs> and looks off camera and I swear if you could capture that as a meme or whatever you know a gif or whatever then um, that would just be hilarious because I think there was a moment of her there just kind of going oh Jared we're pulling you know. in so I just want to say I have also I mean we saw Boogie Nights on Saturday actually and that's part of it is that is a a film that uses um, period pop music brilliantly oh my gosh and the soundtrack in this one oh it's so on the nose but right the, but still even some of the songs they use like blondie's heart of glass is like deployed for al pacino walking through an airport for no obvious reason in slow-mo they uh, even did to uh, get a freaking slow-mo in a two-hour 38 movie <laughs> oh there's a couple slow-mos and oh my gosh yeah yeah um, but yeah, and it's it's but not even like slow mo enough to be ironic counterpoint, right? No, no. It just dull. He's an old man yeah. <laughs> pushing a certain, um, pushing an air airport trolley through an airport yeah. in slow mo. We we get it. And if you, I mean, and if you're going to make a joke of it, I guess make a joke of it and do five shots with a close up of his hand right. or something. There was but no, it's just no kind clever of a, photography in like, the whole thing. And, and just and randomly dropping needle drops like completely out of yes. historical context, like yes. using George Michael's faith for a wedding in 1980, yes. and then oh. using Here Comes the Rain again, and then you get to 1983. Oh, 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 and yeah. get this though. Oh, what song, readers, listeners, watchers, would you put on if somebody was doing something that they that they regretted? I didn't actually know that song. Tracy Chapman's Sorry is all yeah. that me. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> yes, Ridley is serious. And it's a serious film. And it's a serious it? disappointment. It is a serious disappointment. I was acting. I I'll was give you acting. that, yeah. Um, I, 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 we, even yeah. Wore our, we even wore our Gucci jackets. It, it actually feels like a film made for the Golden Globes. Like, which is a shame that this is the year it that the like Golden Globes... It feels like a film made for the Razzies, or whatever <laughs> it's called. Anyway, I don't even know what to do about stars, but I think we can all say. Well, it has five stars in it, but <laughs> only two of them give decent performances, well, so let's land on two. I'm going to go two and a half, because I always like to go half a star more than you. Très Just, just to be <laughs> Thank you for okay. watching. And see you soon.